Hello, drama fans, and welcome to Drama Trails, the series that shows how the best ITV dramas of the last 40 years are all intrinsically linked. They say that only six degrees separate any one of us, and that's true of drama as well. On Drama Trails, we link your favorite shows by actors, writers, and locations, and plot the connections as we travel across the land. As well as delving behind the scenes, we'll be up close and personal with some of our best-known actors. Tonight, we're going to demonstrate how to get from modern-day medical drama Doc Martin to wartime whodunit foils war in six sleuthful steps. Along the way, we get on our bikes up to Yorkshire to meet Trisha Penrose on location. This is the Avensfield Arms kitchen. As you can see, it's quite small and cramped. You know, the camera guys like this and we're all squashed together because it's so narrow, especially <laughs> now. <laughs> we pull the roof down and motor to the Midlands with Leslie Phillips and Simon Shepherd. Simon! Oh, Leslie! Oh, oh wonderful to see you. Really lovely. <laughs> oh. And we turn off the engine for some puzzle playing with actor Lawrence Fox. Rubik's Cube mastered. I'm, I feel invincible. What next? So, see if you can solve the clues as we embark on tonight's intricate drama trail. From Doc Martin to Foyle's War. We start our drama trail tonight with a series created by Anthony Minghella's brother, Dominic. It first aired in September 2004 and has now grown into one of ITV's most popular dramas, achieving over 10 million viewers from the most recent series in 2007. It's the story of a grumpy GP who is relocated from London to the sleepy fishing village of Port Wen. In reality, the lovely Port Isaac on the Cornish coast. Hello, I'm Martin Clunes. Um, I play Doc Martin in the hugely popular television series, Doc Martin. And uh, this is my wife, Philippa, who produces it. Makes me sound like Divi. Makes you sound Divi? I'm just standing here. This is my wife, the Divi. <laughs> I've just finished a study of cutaneous diphtheria and the treatment of infected skin ulcers. Dermatological Society's book of the year. A smart London surgeon develops um, an allergy and uh, a phobia of the sight of blood and the smell of cauterized flesh, which means he can't really practice as a surgeon anymore, so he downsizes to this lovely coastal village where he used to visit as a child to become the GP, um, where he's thoroughly miserable and loathes everyone. But there are two ways we can determine whether you're having a heart attack. Now you can shut up and let me do the ECG, or you can prattle on and we'll see if you die in the next couple of minutes. For the many millions of Dog Martin fans, the beautiful seaside location is the real star of the show. I think the village is like one of our main characters because it's part of the whole series. Mm. Without it, the series wouldn't be the series because it's always got this beautiful background even when it's a horrible day. Mm. So we're kind of one step ahead already. We're being filmed here, there and everywhere. There's something about filming here that's the most natural thing in the world for me. I, I stood on the street in Ealing, you feel quite exposed and sort of stupid and everything, but just coming here and filming, Mm. It just doesn't bother me, it's fine. And we do, we do get quite big crowds, but they're on side, they're not hostile, they're not trying to spoil it. They get quite on board. Because we know it so well, it's like a second home, because we're here four or five months a year. About 70-odd sort of percent of the crew come back, have come back year after year. Mm. Work stops, and they, walk, you know, they go home, change, and walk up there to the pub, you know, and, and, and there's 
pub quizzes and going on and everybody. Really well. uh, they're really good at surfing, <laughs> yeah, and quite good at filming sometimes. Although the exterior shots in the show are filmed on location, most of the interiors require a slight relocation to Doc Martin's rather unconventional studio nearby. Behind us is the barn where we keep our the sets for the interiors of the show. When I first came to see this place, when we were looking for locations in the area, because there aren't any studios down here, and when we opened up this barn, it looked like the right size. It was just full of grain from floor to ceiling, just absolutely full, and we just thought, how we could we do it? So we moved all the grain out and saw that it was just a, like a really good studio space. So. But it's also a working farm. So we've got the cows having TB injections. Cows go in the, yeah, the cattle press there. <laughs> but it's quite nice filming here because it's That's fantastic, peaceful. isn't it? No M25 to battle with, mm. just a bit of cattle. <laughs> and some of the cars got foot and mouth as well, which was embarrassing. <laughs> we didn't put any of them down, though. You're not allowed to. It's ground on. <laughs> <laughs> this is, of course, the uh, the oxidising agent we use. <laughs> Lots of it. That's what we feed the crew with. Here we are. This is the uh, waiting room to the doc's surgery. Pauline's desk goes in the corner there. That's um, where you stomp off a lot up there. I stamp off going home up there. Yeah. yeah. It all looks very strange, empty. Who else has been vomiting? What, what is it with you people? This always happens. If one of you gets it, you all get it. Athletes' foot had spread like the plague. Did you wash your hands? No. Oh, well, goodness gracious, maybe there's a link. More crosswords get done when you're in the studio. <laughs> Well, you probably don't know that, but yeah. some of the crew are always working. <laughs> I feel I can tell you that now. <laughs> Oh, it's just a working notice so, yeah. for the surgery, but the art department get bored and write things on. Single male thinks women of Cornwall have van, will travel, love surf and eating. Girls only, brackets, possibly ladyboy, if convincing. Call, cool. I'd better not say his name. <laughs> <laughs> Might be actionable. Some of these notices we've been, we've had right from the start. Uh, the doc is a brilliant surgeon, first and foremost. Socially, totally inadequate, intolerant, um, impatient. Just a bit stunted. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's an acting choice. <laughs> Emotionally crippled, yeah. Yeah, but so in love with Louisa. Louisa, I... Yes. I'm going to need a stool sample. The success over the three series has, has really taken us by surprise, and especially the last series. People obviously bought into it wholeheartedly, and especially the romance between the Doc and Louisa. And yeah, we're thrilled by it. I don't think we'll be able to do it forever, because I think it'll sort of run out naturally, but um, I'm gonna, you know, you'll have to beat me with a stick to stop me. I mean, this beach, I've, I've, I've chased men dressed as women along this beach. I've healed the sick. I've done an emergency tracheotomy up on that hill, the same hill I've delivered a baby on. It's sort of, you know, everywhere I look, there's, there's, there's moments and stuff that I've done here. It's, um, it's great. Well, that's the first appointment of tonight's drama trail concluded. We've worn in our Doc Martens, and next, we'll be stepping into some 1960s shoes in rural Yorkshire. I didn't know at all how to, how to ride a motorbike, and to an extent, I still don't. I'm still kind of learning. I only passed my test a few weeks ago. And we'll be dressing up Jane Austen style with actor Joseph Beatty. These, these shirts are hilarious because the idea was you didn't wear underwear. So you just had your shirt down, you kind of a little tuck, and then you decided which way you were going to dress for the day. As we continue our drama trail from Doc Martin to Foyle's War. Where to next on tonight's drama trail? Well, before the break, we were learning all about Doc Martin from the man himself, Martin Clunes. 
Martin was originally encouraged to become an actor by his cousin Jeremy Brett, who famously portrayed Sherlock Holmes for many years. Brett was once married to the wonderful actress Anna Massey, who as well as working alongside greats like Michael Powell and Alfred Hitchcock, also appeared in Darling Buds of May, which launched many a career, including that of Philip Franks. Franks has now gone on to star as Sergeant Raymond Craddock in over 80 episodes of the long-running Sunday night treat, Heartbeat. Still going strong with a reborn cast on the North Yorkshire Moors.